Okay. Uh, in order to create a pivot table to calculate the relative frequency of uh, each constituency. For example, I want to calculate how many of the candidates are from the Hong Kong Island, how many of them are from the current West, for example. Uh, what you need to do is to highlight data in column A, okay? And then there is a little tape here called data. And then pivot table. Okay, let's start from the beginning. First, we drag the field names constituency into the row labels. And then we drag this guy again to the values. And uh, there is an I here, which is meaning information, info. Drag it. Crack it. Make sure it is a count. Okay. And then OK. You get a count for each category of data. Okay. For example, Hong Kong Island, 14 which is actually meaning there are 14 of them uh, from Hong Kong Islands. Okay. okay, this one. This is a step one. The step two is I want to calculate the percentage. For example, how many of them, how many of the candidates are from the Hong Kong Island? Okay. You can also do it with the pivot table. Just drag this guy again here to the values. But this time, click the I, and then there is the options. Show data as percentage of columns. And then OK. You will get the percentage. From the percentage, you can see that, okay, most of them are from the new territory east. Still follow, right? Do I need to repeat it? So smart. Before I'm moving on, uh, I want to have a little revision on the lectures by Dr. Fu. Uh, the data, when you do the data analysis, you need to first know the level of measurement of your data, okay? There are two broad categories. One is called continuous, another is categorical. Okay. Continuous, as the name implies, is just some continuous number. For example, the, the weight, the height, your weight, your height, all of them are continuous. Your age is continuous, right? They are continuous number. Uh, Another kind is called categorical. The data is divided into different categories. For example, the gender. Gender is a categorical data because this you, you 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 can only have two categories of of people. Okay, maybe more, but uh, male and female. So the purpose of the Gender data is to divide your data into categories. Okay. Uh, so, in the Legislative Council data, the column A, the constituency, is uh, okay. How many of them? How many of you think that it is a uh, categorical data? 
continuous. Okay, categorical, correct. Uh, this one, parties. Categorical, okay. This one, the votes. Oh wait, do a survey. How many of you think that this is a categorical data? How many of you think that this is a continuous? Okay, most of you are correct. This one is tricky. Okay, survey again, categorical. Continuous. Okay. Uh, actually, this one can be both. Okay. Because this is the ordinal data. But anyway, uh, let's treat it as a, as a categorical variables first, because we can only have 0 and 1 here. Okay, as most of you know that, the false uh, is a continuous variable. So, uh, this time I want to construct a frequency table of the false. Okay, do the same things, data, private table, Sure, it is count. And then you get something like this, which is not useful at all because you only get one here, one here. All, all of them are one because you are treating a continuous variable as a categorical variable, which is not good. So, uh, when we try to construct a frequency table for a continuous variable, we need to group the data into uh, different categories using diff uh, intervals, okay? And um, in order to do that, Craig, Craig, the first column on your pivot table, right Craig it. There is a group and outline and then select group. And uh, in this grouping windows, you can specify how the data should be grouped. For example, I want it to starting from zero and then uh, by maybe 5,000. The data will be grouped accordingly. Okay, and uh, you can change the grouping. For example, I want to group it by 10,000. You get less uh, category. Okay. Questions? <gasps> you guys are so smart. Okay, just let you do that yourself first. Now try it. Try different variables and construct a pivot table as you like.
Okay, for those of you who are using Windows, the pivot table option is actually hiding in the insert tab, not the data. But if you are using Mac, it's data, tab is data.
Okay, because most of you has asked me how to do the grouping, I want to repeat it again so that you know how to do it. I want to make sure that all of you know how to do that. Okay, first highlight data, give a table, And then make sure it has some values first. And there is one more one more information. Make sure that the data is count, it's not sum. And then calculate the column percentage. After you construct a useless table like this, click anywhere on the first column, right click it, and then select group, group and outline, and then there is an option called group. And uh, you can specify how to group that. And you will have the table like this. Okay. And uh, in your assignment, you, you are supposed to turn in a frequency table that look like this, but don't just copy and paste, okay? If you copy and paste this table into your Word document like this, I will not be great. I will not grade it, okay? What you are supposed to do is to construct a new table like this, and then close, and then this one is frequency. And then add the percentage after the count, like this. Okay. Remember. 
remember that. Okay, after you do the pivot table, you will get a table like this, right? But uh, sometimes you also want to plot it, meaning create a graph out of this table. Um, for data, that the frequency for, for displaying a frequency distribution graphically, most of the people will use pie charts. But um, in this class, I will only teach you how to use a bar chart to display the frequency distribution. And I will show you why later. But first, I want to show you how to, how to construct a bar chart first. Uh, after you construct such a pivot table, a much safer way is to first copy the data first and then click anywhere, any white space, and then paste special. Remember to paste special, not paste. And then select values. You just paste the values, not the formula involved. So maybe you just more change the name to something makes sense. Highlight this guy. Charts. And you can select different kinds of uh, charts you want to construct. Uh, for, 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 for this class, we will use the column. Actually, column and bar is very similar, but uh, there is just the, the diff only difference is the orientation. But uh, we will use the column. And then select the first one, cluster column. You will get a simple graphs like this. And uh, you may want to customize this graph a little bit. And uh, for example, you want to add the axis label to these graphs. There is a purple guy, purple tape here called chart layout. And uh, for example, axis label, you want to get uh, axis, the horizontal axis label or the label for the x-axis, which is the both. And uh, the vertical one, which is the frequency. Also, you may want to change the title. The frequency distribution of rows. And you may want to delete this one. And then you get a very clean graphs. Okay. <coughs> Do it again. Charts, columns. You will instantly get a graph. But uh, you want to, you may want to customize it. If you need to customize a graph, there is a chart options, and uh, there is a lot of option for you to change. And. Uh, And uh, one of the most common argument 
or when you when you when you learn how to plot the graphs for for data like this in high school, maybe uh, your teacher will tell you to plot it as a pie chart, right? So the relative distribution of uh, the data. But uh, I want to make a counter argument here. Okay, now I have A, B, C, D, four categories, and I plot the relative frequency of A, B, C, D. And uh, from in most of the time, the pie chart will have the numbers, right? How many percentage? Just beside maybe here. But uh, if a pie chart without the numbers, can you tell me which categories A, B, C, D have the highest percentage? Can you tell from the graphs? Difficult, right? And uh, but from these graphs, the bar chart, you can know the difference instantly. For example, C is the highest, and uh, B and D have the same percentage, same chance. It is because our eye is very is not very good at distinguishing the difference of angles. The pie chart actually depends on the angles. But uh, for bar chart it is the length. Our eye is good at distinguishing the difference of in length than angles. So if you can Please plot the frequency distribution as a bar chart. Okay, don't use the bar, the pie chart again. Okay, unless your boss asks you to do so. Questions.
there are some inconsistency between the Windows and Mac version of Excel. So, uh, particularly about the pivot table. So, uh, in a class, I will only teach you how to use Excel, the, the Mac version, but uh, because some of you are using Windows, I will also post the information about how to do it uh, on Windows, uh, on the Moodles, okay, after the class, because I need to do some investigation myself first. Uh, okay, let's move on. The pivot table that we have constructed uh, only involves one variable. But uh, sometimes you want to construct a pivot table with two variables. For example, you want to know what is the winning probability for each constituency, which is involving two variables. One is the constituency, and other is the winners or losers, right? Uh, in order to do so, you need to first select all the data. But uh, yeah, there's a one little trick here. After you select all the data, you can, this box here, this little box here, is called a name box. You can give this range a name. For example, you can call it all data. Okay. Next time when you get lost and then you want to select all the data again, you don't, you don't need to select it from here again. You can just type in all data. It will select it automatically. And uh, it's very handy tricks uh, if your data is very large. And after you select all the data and then go to the data pivot table, dump all the rubbish, first put the constituency into the row label, and then put the winner or loser to the column. And then select either constituency or sigmoid. It doesn't matter to the to the values. And uh, make sure it is count. Okay, first now you get a count. You want to get also get a percentage, right? But uh, this time, this table have two variables in it. If you recall from your lecture, there are two ways to display those percentage. One is the row percentage, another is the column percentage. And uh, the row percentage, as the name implies, is uh, these two number will add up to 100%. If you calculate the column percentage, this number will add up to 100 and uh, I will show you how to how to do uh, both of them. First, the column percentage. Uh, drag either the seat or the constituency into the values. Make sure you can't. There's an option here. So data as percentage of columns. This one is the column percentage. This number add up to 100%, right? You can also calculate the row percentage. You will get something like this. Now the road add up to 100%. Okay, now a bigger question. Suppose I want to investigate 
the winning probability for each geographical constituency. Which percentage should I use? Row percentage or column percentage? Okay, do a survey again. How many of you think that we should use the column percentage? Column. One. Okay. How many of you think that we should use the row percentage? Zero. Yeah, so great. And um uh, I will show the numbers to you. Okay, this young man here think that we should use the column percentage, right? So let's try that. Very good try, actually. After we construct we do the column percentage. What we get is uh, how many of losers, for example, this number is how many, what is the percentage of losers from the Hong Kong island? Very good try, but it's not correct. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is not the number we want, right? Instead, if we calculate the row percentage, we can see from the numbers that one meaning winners, right? The winning percentage in the Hong Kong island is 50-50. Uh, uh, in the Kowloon East, it's higher than 50. But uh, in the Liu Treasury East, the uh, winning percentage is lower than 50. So if you are considering wanting for election uh, in the next uh, legal election, which, uh, which constituency should you consider from these numbers? This one, right? Because you have a much higher probability of winning than maybe due church three east. Right? This is the probability of winning. So yeah, that's it. And um I want to give you a theoretical background of something called we call the exposure and outcome. Exposure and outcome. Exposure is something that happened before the outcome, right? For example, I want to study the relationship between smoking and cancer. Okay. For example, I want to show that those who smoke will ultimately get cancer. Okay. Smoking will be the exposure. And cancer will be the outcome. Right? So when you construct a pivot table, smoker or not, we usually put in the row. Okay, and uh, 
the column will be cancer and uh, low cancer. And uh, after you do a very big study, you find that uh, the frequency distribution is something like that. And uh, remember, your, the purpose of your study is to show that smoker have a higher risk of having cancers. So, after we construct a, a frequency table like this, which percentage should we use? Row percentage or column percentage? Again, survey. Column percentage, zero. Row percentage, zero again. Huh? Huh? Both is a good try, but uh, because we want to answer one particular question only which is, what is the risk of uh, smoker and non-smoker to have cancer? If you give a uh, lot of numbers, this, uh, if you give both, it works, but it didn't answer the questions correctly. Do you know what I mean? Answers will be only one. <laughs> there will be no two answers. If you give, give too many numbers, it will be some of them are, are, are not useful, right? Okay. The answer is row percentage, not column percentage. After the calculation, you can get that, you can get the numbers, the risk, technical terms is risk. The risk, the risk of a cancer in smokers and non-smoker. From the numbers, you can see that the smoker have a much higher risk of having cancers. Right? But uh, if you calculate the column percentage, which is answering a very different questions, Just uh, times 100 to make it uh, percentage. This number is not the risk of a uh, smoker having cancers. This one is among those cancer patients, how many of them are smokers? They have different meaning. Okay. You can also show that. Okay, among cancer patients, uh, the smoker, they are more smoker. But you cannot show the causal relationship. If you're considering this one is the exposure and this one is the outcome. In most of the time, we want to know the percentage of outcome, of different outcome, rather than the percentage of different exposure. So you need to first, 
Yeah, when you're answering the questions like this, the, the, the mechanism is like this. First step, identify the purpose of this table. For example, the purpose of this table is to show that cancer have a higher risk. Oh, no, no, no. Smoker have a higher risk of cancer. Okay. The second step is to identify which one is the exposure, which one is the outcome. Exposure is something usually happens first. And then uh, the outcome is, of course, the outcome. Um, and, then you put the, and then you put the exposure in the row and put the outcome in the column and then calculate the row percentage. And this is the, the step through. So uh, in your assignment, you are supposed to calculate the similar things. Uh, but uh, you, are, you are supposed to show the relationship between gender and, and the self-described self proficiency in statistics. So tell me, gender or the self-proficiency in statistics is the exposure. Which one is the exposure? Huh? Yeah, because your gender is determined at your birth, right? But your self-proficiency in statistics is something happened after you know your, your gender, right? So remember that when you're answering these questions. Okay, there is a very tricky question in the, in the assignment. And actually, this is all you need to know for, 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 for completing the assignment. Uh, once again, uh, the assignment one will be due in the midlife, so please turn it turn in on time before midlife. Any late submission will not be great, unless you apply for uh, extension. For this week assignment, you will have two weeks to to do it because next week we will not have the tutorial. Okay. And uh, yeah, have fun. See you next time. <laughs>